What's going on guys, Bengal again here, back with another episode of Giants Franchise Post-Offseason. We are into 2025, we're in the preseason, as I've mentioned in numerous episodes, but I'll do here at the start of this season, so we're all on the same page. League settings, I can check, but it will kick me out of. We still are on All Madden, and injury, I can't do anything about at this moment. It's just going to be stuck on on. And when I try to back out, it's going to disconnect me. So we're going to try to simulate through the preseason here. But uh, we'll see what happens. Madden 23 has been a broken mess. My league remains broken, but thankfully I can actually advance and play games and continue the story and develop and things along those lines. These are the sliders if you are curious. However, there has been no update because I can't update it, but there has been a game update. So the game could play very different with the newest title update that just went live in Madden 23, maybe even yesterday. These are the sliders. As I've mentioned a million times to this point, I cannot change them. But it is so that it should be very, very difficult for me and very, very easy for the computer. It doesn't always play out like that, but that's how it is. And those sliders are, I think, a stem from the Matt 10 sliders on Operation Sports, and then I've made them more difficult in general. So it's basically what he has. But we're going to see if we can get through this preseason without any huge injuries. We've already had some injuries. I signed some players to be role players to this point. Uh, and we'll go over the draft really quickly. Kendall Weathersby was someone that we took. We traded back into the first round to get him. Rookie receiver out of Texas A&M. We know Odell's not going to be around forever. We got a huge speedster who is dynamic after the catch. Agility, change of direction, speed, all very, very, very good. The juke and spin are not quite as high as you would want, and he doesn't have the rack catch trait, which is a little bit odd. But in a world where we might trade Odell Beckham Jr., who's regressing, and we might trade Kadarius Tony, who's now playing on the franchise tag. Weathersby could earn a lot more playing time. Greg Sheldon in line for some playing time, as is Wondell Robinson. We've got a deep receiver room, but we are lacking kind of that top-end talent. That's why we lean on the tight end Nick Duvall so much. And then defensively, we are dealing with a nagging injury for Derek Cooper right now. And uh, Bost, Claiborne, Dontrell Cobb will continue to play a lot. We signed Camu Grugier hill not sure how much he's going to play. We signed the beast out of Charlotte, Larry Ogunjobi, Tier Tart, Robert Quinn. Uh, we drafted Yarbrough. But our first round pick, our first one, was Victor Farr, a corner from Florida, 5'11", 182. Hopefully he won't be too far from the opposing receiver. He'll earn some playing time over this season as well. He's got great speed. Good press. Zone coverage leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, but there's things to like here. For sure. Has pretty good size, 5'11". It's not elite, obviously, but it's fine. And then great speed, obviously. So we'll see what happens with that. We do have an upgrade for Cody Bailey. Still looking to develop his deep accuracy. And throw under pressure would be nice. I think that's improviser. So let's go ahead and do that. His overall is unchanged, but we'll see what type of upgrades we get. Break sack by one. Throw in the run by one like that. And throw under pressure plus two. All pretty good improvements there. I still would really like deep accuracy to improve, but, you know, he's still super young. You got to remember he's only 23 years old, uh, coming off his best season, I think quite obviously. So I'm excited to get into week one here. Uh, this was just a preseason game we played on stream, so these are not actually 2025 numbers. But you can see the jump from 2024 from 2023, more touchdowns, more yards, higher passer rating, was sacked way fewer times. Obviously, we did attempt more passes. We completed more as well. The completion percentage went down, but the quality of the pass went up. So we're not going to worry too much about preseason other than the uh, injuries. Trade offers, though, is interesting. Wandale Robinson is, I don't think, on the trade block, but they, we are, they, maybe the CPU added him. We are getting offers. I'm in no hurry to trade Wandale Robinson. Not sure that I have to. Is he going into the final year of his contract? That's something to consider. He either has one or two years left at the most, and it is one year remaining. And as you can see, our receiver situation is not amazing. That's why we went out and drafted Weathersby. We have Greg Sheldon, but he's more of a returner, as you guys know. 
But Wandale Robinson, Odell Beckham Jr., who's regressing, and Kadarius Toney all technically on one-year contracts right now. So we'll have to figure out wide receiver for sure. Although we do have wide receiver mentorship. A veteran wide receiver wants to help a youngster on the team. Why is it Wandale, dude? Start calling Wandale Odell Jr. What about Kendall Weathersby, man? Wandale could definitely get open more. I think that's the biggest thing for receivers. Get open. He's already going to be good short. Let's do long. Just make him a little bit more well-rounded. So, I, I know he's a slot guy. I know he's a run-after-catch guy. But... Developing him more down the field is going to make him more well-rounded, maybe less of a liability, more of a complete player. So we'll have to do that. And then weekly strategy we'll continue to do. Again, injuries could be a little bit of a problem. There's Edward Sloan. You guys remember him in the Cody Bailey draft class. I'm really most worried about here about the training players. Cody Bailey will remain. Weathersby far makes sense. I have Lawrence Bost. Niles Richard is the fullback we drafted. No shot on that. Could go Nick Duvall, could go Dontrell Cobb, could go with one of the young linebackers. John Boss is in there. I think it makes the most sense to throw Derek Cooper in there as well. And then maybe instead of Dexter Lawrence, we go with somebody else. I'm going to leave Dexter Lawrence in there for now. He's 27. He's kind of quickly approaching that age of regression. He played such a great season in real life that his overall has probably surpassed that. But of course, we have him from, you know, the first update of the game, first roster so his overall was pretty low. They didn't recognize Sexy Dexy. It's unfortunate, but we'll just look to continue to develop these guys. Odell's got a quad strain. He's going to miss one of these preseason games. That's okay. Okay, hopefully no injuries against the Dolphins, and then we're good to go because we have the final bye week here of the preseason. And we did win again, though, which is nice. Injury report going into the bye. Nobody. So we're going to be good to go for week one, which, of course, will be in this video. But before we do that, we have to cut five players. And I mean, you can see some players that we've signed, like Jacob Harris uh, and Dylan Soner off camera. And then some guys we drafted, like J.J. Middleton. If you didn't watch the offseason video, I highly recommend that. That's why we have some new players like Kirk Cousins and cornerback Caleb Farley. Although we'll, we'll see what ends up happening. Who earns playing time at the cornerback position? Haven't really decided on things yet. It's going to be, you know determined based on who makes plays and who plays well and uh, we'll see I like having depth at my linebacker position so I'm not really in a hurry to cut anybody here I think we can afford to get rid of a defensive tackle uh, we might just lose the lowest one on here which is Maurice Hurst Tier Tart also another really good player in real life Hurst is a little bit older still good but you know it, I guess Tier Tart's gonna be a little bit cheaper and maybe a little bit better for us I think we will end up moving J.J. Middleton to our practice squad. He may get signed, so moving some of these guys to the practice squad is, in some cases, as good as a cut, which is a little bit unfortunate. We definitely don't need this many tight ends. So, even though we're going to, you know, Dylan Soner is a good blocking tight end, we're going to cut him. Jacob Harris might as well be, you know, a receiver at tight end. We might look to hold on to him. Receiver, we can't really do anything. Don't need to carry two fullbacks. We have Reggie Gilliam, who, of course, torched us in one of those playoff games. Niles Richard is a younger rookie. I just don't think he's as good. So, because Reggie Gilliam has 87 speed compared to, like, 74. I'm going to move Richard to the practice squad. Somebody might sign him, though. McLean's going to get cut. We draft him. No, I signed him. I think he had, like, pie trucking or something. We don't really need him. Three running backs is fine. We can't carry multiple fullbacks, so... Richard to the practice squad. He's going to get signed away. I prefer more speed at fullback. Actually, no, I wouldn't. We're going to we're gonna sign Niles Richard back from the practice squad. I wonder if that overwrites his actual contract. I think I would rather have someone that can just block really well. Because we don't really throw to Reggie Gilliam ever. So the Reggie Gilliam New York Giants tenure is over. Yeah, that does, it does actually overwrite his contract. Because we drafted him, right? He should have a four-year contract, so interesting and here we are to week one okay so you probably notice we have a ton of coach points i don't really like to use those it just feels like it's a little bit too easy and that's kind of where we are we just won the super bowl we don't want it to be too easy we don't really want to abuse those but what we can do 
is going to manage staff here. Go into franchise staff. I think you probably know where we're going with this. We can scroll all the way down and we can reveal a hidden development trait for one player per season. The only guy we can do it on is Kendall Weathersby, of course. So we are going to learn if he has star, superstar, or even superstar X Factor, highly doubted development. And I'm going to be honest, a better development trait, I'll play him earlier. It's just going to be what happens. He could jump up some spots here, but we'll see. Does only have star. That's what we figured it would be. Doesn't really move the needle too much for me right now. I'm going to keep Wandell where he is. Weathersby may rotate in. We'll be returning kicks probably to start for us alongside uh, Greg Sheldon, even though Sheldon will be the primary. Weathersby will be the second. You know, maybe there's an injury to Greg Sheldon and maybe the kick goes to Weathersby on a return, although that's a little bit unlikely. Uh, we got our group. This is the, the way we're going to start. You know, I'm pretty comfortable with the way the team looks. We've got good rush defensive tackles. We moved to a 4-3 if you did not finish the offseason, or maybe we did it in the preseason on stream. We're a 4-3 now. I have high hopes that this is going to be a little bit more effective for us on defense, generate a little bit more pressure. Uh, Darnay Holmes will play in the slot. We signed Caleb Farley to be a boundary corner. That's what he's going to be. Far will occasionally rotate in. My starting sub linebackers will be Cobb, Bost, and then Claiborne instead of Edmonds. Don't really know what Akeel Edmonds is going to do just yet. We're going to figure something out for him. And then Derek Cooper will be the backup rush end at multiple spots. And then as far as a slot receiver goes, could be Kadarius Toney. Our season goal is going to be to make the playoffs for sure. Um, we're not going to get fired either way, so it's not really super relevant. But that is always our goal when the Super Bowl make the playoffs. I think make the playoffs is a good choice here. And then opening day keys. The Cowboys are a tough team. They've got some talent. We'll see how they play. It's opening day this week and a fresh start for every team around the league, and you'll be facing the Cowboys. What's the key to victory? Well, I think it's it's sometimes just very challenging to stop teams on defense. So we're going to go ahead and ideally try to establish a rhythm on offense, dictate the flow of the game, and get a big enough lead to make their offense one-dimensional. How many times have we read that? And then the passing game. I think we've changed a little bit here. We are a pass-first team at this point. It's a passing league. Whether you're leading or trailing, passing is the best option for yards and points. So being able to air it out is how... Uh, I, how am I supposed to read that that quickly? I don't know. Air superiority. Beat the Cowboys. Throw for 350 plus yards. I do want to run the ball still. But I have to recognize that sometimes it is difficult to run the ball. I'm not going to force it, you old heads that want to see me run the ball 30 times a game into my own offensive line. It's just not going to happen. Defend the deep pass, fine versus Dak. Player health, I pretty much always do a half pads and split at this point. I think that's the best combination. So that's what I've been doing for a while now. And I think I always will do it going forward. It's the move. It's the way to do it run inside. It doesn't seem to work ever in the first half for me. It seems to, you know, matter in the second half though, which is bizarre, but uh, we're going to try run outside to mix it up. And then we'll probably end up going run inside and seeing what happens. And these are the players that we're going to be having in here. Talked about this earlier. I think it's a pretty good mix. And then our weekly game plan goal, we can have it match. We'll actually go two plus passing touchdowns. I think that's reasonable. Even though Saquon Barkley pounding the rock in if we get near the goal line is probably the optimal way to go about things. Here we go. No injuries, please. No injuries on defense. And then on offense. Guys appear to be healthy as well. So we're chilling. We're doing okay. This is the best team that we can throw out there. We brought in the beast out of Charlotte. Larry Ogunjobi, we're good to go. Giants, Cowboys, fun matchup. Marquise Skandrick, the unfortunately unathletic linebacker, gets an upgrade there. And we'll pop into this season game. Cowboys, Giants, you know what it is. This could be a future playoff matchup. You know we're going to see this team again. Micah Parsons, Zeke, Dak Prescott, some talented players on that other team. As we have a Thursday night primetime to kick off the NFL season. Giants, Cowboys, let's get it. All 14 of the Cowboys will take the field there. I don't know why they even bother having players run out of the locker room when it's only like one or two and then it's the team shot and there are like 12 of them. Like, what are we doing? But that's our guy. Cody Bailey, 
going into year three. It's a big year for him. However, I think we saw, you know, a big improvement in year two, especially at the end of year two. He led us to a Super Bowl. What are you going to do, man? I mean, Cody Bailey is the guy. I know he had some haters for a while. You guys have definitely cooled off on that. I think you're recognizing good play when you see it. So uh, Cody Bailey has improved. The offense has improved. Our players are continuing to get better. We are in a decent spot. So I'm hoping for a big season here. Hoping for another Super Bowl, obviously. Giants franchise 2025. Wyatt Anthony to kick. And here we go. The 2025 season is officially underway. Touchback to start. Wouldn't have it any other way with Wyatt Anthony. Dak Prescott, we see his ratings here. But that really doesn't tell us a whole lot about uh, much because sometimes the CPU just plays like the best player of all time. Other times they play terribly. And we'll see what this uh, season has in store. What a route from CD Lamb. Boss makes the tackle. Lamb really just stopped on a dime there. To run is actually play action. Dak might look to scramble though, and he does throw down the field. This has got to be a pick. Adore Jackson cannot reel it in. Nearly intercepted. That one certainly could have been going the other way, and we'll take a look at the Dallas offense before what could be a crucial third down. Dak Prescott in at quarterback. Running back is Zeke, but no more Tony Pollard. It's now the second year running back, Elijah Miles. Oh no. The giant killer, Reggie Gilliam, has signed back with the Cowboys. See if we see him today. C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, Damian Collins, a rookie receiver with not great speed. And then Curtis Grant does have great speed, is their fourth option. Tight end is Dalton Schultz, Jake Ferguson, Vince Jarrett in there as well. Pretty awful speed as well at tight end. And then their line's good. Tyron Smith, Greg Bost, a rookie left guard. Probably no relation to our starting linebacker, John Bost. Not for sure, but got a pretty good idea. Uh, Tyler Biotish at center. Right guard is Zach Martin, and the right tackle is the rookie. Montrell Adams. Is Tyler Smith injured? Nope, they're just going with Greg Bost over him. And here is that third down. Probably not going to guess pass here. Oh, it's going to be read option. Dak keeps it. Boom, big hit! Gord by Glenn Gore, and the Don recovers. Dak Prescott goes read option, takes a shot from our now second year safety, former top pick, Glenn Gore. Absolutely spears Dak Prescott. Football on the ground. You know it's going to be recovered by the Don. Kiss the ring. Don Trell Cobb, the king of New York, getting things going here early with securing that football, getting the turnover. But Glenn Gore started it all. Love to see former first round picks make great plays for us. It's been a while since the Giants can say that. Although this year, things have obviously changed, of course. Dexter Lawrence really coming on. Kayvon Thibodeau's played well. And we'll run the football with Saquon Barkley to get things going. First on offense. Saquon goes for a few. The several yards. Second and three after the seven-yard pickup. Here we go. Quick throw. Duvall. They played that pretty well. Juan Thornhill crashing down. And on third down, we'll meet the Dallas defense. Left end is the longtime Cowboy, Demarcus Lawrence, Sam Williams in behind him. Adrian Lake, remember him in the draft. I think LSU, but I can't confirm, starting at right end. Defensive tackle, Osa Adigazua, former brother, or brother or former giant, Oa Adigazua. Braden Gaines in behind him. Anthony Barr, Leighton Van Der Esch, and Micah Parsons makes up a very good linebacker. Core, and then corners, Trayvon Diggs, Greedy Williams, and Emmett Trapp. He's definitely LSU, right? I believe so. Deron Bland in there as well. Juan Thornhill starts at free safety with J. Ron Curse in at strong safety. They also brought in Andre Sisco. A bit too conservative there, perhaps, as we try to run a trap with Saquon Barkley and lose a few. Okay, their defense completely contained that. Our offensive interior really did not do a good enough job, and we got better in the offseason. Lindstrom, Eric McCoy, and of course the signing of James Daniels at right guard. Thought that probably wouldn't be happening too much in 2025, but third and one, we got stonewalled. Wyatt Anthony's kick is good, obviously. It's Wyatt Anthony. He can hit from any range. And then we'll get back on defense. Hold on just a second. Grant just got the football and casually has superstar X-Factor. Am I seeing that right? He's starting in the slot for them. He's not. How is he even on the field? 
Dude had superstar X Factor. I got so frustrated with this play. I didn't even speak during it. Because I felt like we were doing a pretty good job here. And then it's so annoying. We're using Dontrell Cobb, kind of taking away three routes. And Darnay Holmes leaves the sideline. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that there. And then he leaves, you know, it gives up a ton of yards as a result. It's annoying. But he should be playing better in the slot this year. There's a quick throw. And wrapped up is the running back. Second down and five. I will say it's kind of nice to have my defensive ends actually pass rush every play. There's a nice tackle, Darnay Holmes. And I, I think he just kind of ran into Jeffrey Simmons. That'll count. Good result for us. Third down and three. We're going to contain here with Ojolari on that one side. See if Prescott wants to step up. And he's going to throw on the run. That's got to be a swat away. And it's completed. How does Michael Gallup possibly catch that? Xavier McKinney's right there. Adoree Jackson's right there. I'm going for the swat. Somebody's got to knock that down. This cannot be a catch. Hey, he does a backflip. I, I, what is that? Dak, throw a stupid ball. There he goes. Kayvon Thibodeau brings him down, but we have worse news. Injury to Dexter Lawrence could be a huge blow. We have some decent depth at defensive tackle. We'll come out with only three down linemen following the injury. Jeffrey Simmons is going to have to do a really good job here. But we can, ex we can expect pass. It's actually going to be a run. Second and 22, they run the ball. And they make it back to third and 10. We're going to bring in Tierra Tart for uh, this series. But I think we can definitely pass him in on third and 10. If they want to run the ball here, fine. Play good defense. Play good defense. That's got to be a pick. Knocked into the air and incomplete. Would have loved the turnover, obviously. We'll take the incompletion. Dallas will likely tie it up as Tyler Bass is wearing number 20. Tony Pollard, that kicker, bangs it home. Going to be 3-3. We had some opportunities for some turnovers on that drive. I didn't cash in, unfortunately. And Greg Sheldon's first kick return, the last time he touched the football, it went to the house. Not as fortunate this time. Two kickoff return touchdowns. And in the Super Bowl, no less. One of the most insane performances of all time. He got robbed of Super Bowl MVP. It's unbelievable. We'll pass here off play action on first down. We're going to roll out. We're going to throw on the run. Can we hit him? What a throw from Bailey and a great catch from Tony on the sideline. That's the way you do it. Tony cooking Trayvon Diggs. We've seen that before. And that is a big gain and a, a worthwhile celebration there from Kadarius Tony. What a reward. <laughs> I mean, that's a great ball. Diggs couldn't do anything. We're gonna go RPO here. Saquon Barkley looked for some space. Tried to juke back the other way. Juke me the wrong way. Second and eight. And we'll pass as a result. Oh no, that could have been bad. Larry Smith, great catch. Doesn't really do much for us. Why was that DB playing so shallow? Cover three, I mean, you'd think he probably would have run with uh, Tony there for a bit longer. I guess he knew he was releasing towards the inside. And we got we got fortunate there. That's not going the other way. All right, third down and five. Maybe not the best play call. We'll see who gets open. And that's nearly intercepted. And again, it's frustrating because I feel like uh, not the best decision, granted. But... Odell does a thing he why why would he ever do? He's supposed to stop on this route and just sit down. And because we get a shit animation, he what is that? Like just sit down. It looks like he's about to sit down and then Leighton Vanderesh is in a weird area so he like does a weird animation to swim around him as I throw to where he should be and then he's turned around. Like what is that? Larry Smith ends up being Wide open, by the way, but the ball's already out, so I don't really see that as super relevant. We made a decision, and at the ball, the time I threw, you know, Larry Smith was uh, going to be covered. I don't know. Whatever. I'm not going to justify it. Uh, it's a dumb animation either way, and uh, we'll settle for a 63-yard attempt. But wh with Wyatt Anthony, it's debatably too easy, and he bangs it home. No question. Didn't even get full power. Didn't need it. No problem. From the logo. All day. Run. 
fill the lane. That's a good job. Thibodeau's right there. Dontrell Cobb's right there. Zeke can only muster a yard. And it's second down and nine. This is Derek Cooper off the edge. Let's blitz him. Now they're going to run towards his side. Wrap up. Make a play. There's Dontrell Cobb. It's a limited gain. That's fine. I think we had that defended pretty well. I'm actually a little bit annoyed they even managed to get a couple yards out of that. I feel like it probably should have been fewer. But it's okay. Third down and seven. Forcing them into a passing situation. Trying to cover everything. And Dak just checks down. Incomplete. They'll punt. All right, here we go. Let's get it going. First touchdown of the year. Come on. Saquon, good start. Four rushes for 11 yards. You know, it's not... It's not amazing, but it's really just he got stonewalled a couple times, and then we've had two good runs. We just are looking to find that consistency. There's a decent run from Barkley. Bobbing in and out, navigating his way through the wreckage. First down. This could be a time to take a shot off play action. Step up, let it go. Larry Smith down the field. Need a touchdown on that. Big completion, big first down. But would love for that to be a touchdown. We're going to switch sides of the field here after the end of the first quarter. 6-3. to three, A real slugfest up to this point. We do have a turnover, though. Forced, at least. And uh, a couple of field goals looking to actually capitalize here. And we'll see what we can do. The decent throw from Bailey. It's just kind of the way that goes in the game. If you don't do the special pass lead, you're not getting the result. Jump ball, Duval, incomplete. Maybe a little post to Duval here. They're covering a lot of guys on it. There's a good throw under pressure from Cody Bailey finding. Looks like Saquon Barkley underneath. I think that was Saquon getting up. One catch for seven yards. Here we go. Ah, that's just that's just not the right decision. That's a poor pass. It ended up being an open receiver, but the ball came out too late. Uh, definitely should have been a touchdown there. Instead, it's the first interception of the season for Bailey. We stepped up into an under-pressure situation almost. Stepped up a little bit too far in the pocket. And then just overshot Tony. So, I'll break this down for you. You know, we're out of empty here. Uh, ball needs to come out right here. Boom. Nick Duvall. Don't think about it. You're fine. Didn't throw the ball. Started stepping up. We are now navigating out of the pocket... And we've put ourselves in a situation for pressure. We led the ball to Kadarius Tony. Also see uh, an open Odell here, but would have been a really tough ball to get in there. That's probably an interception. The same player in J. Ron Curse. But Tony ends up with a step because we timed it so Vayton, uh, Leighton Van Der Esch was flat footed. Uh, and he's open. But as you can see, the pass just goes right by him. Nothing we can do. But the mistake was stepping too far up in the pocket. So, just got to make fewer mistakes and we won't have turnovers like that. Obviously, a drive killer. Our drive is over. But these are game killers because that's seven points off the board. And it's still six to three. Not good. Not good at all. Jed the block. Get off the block! Zeke's been uh, running well so far. And being in the zone, not something I like to see. We might have to bring out a formation that's uh, better at stopping the run. It's gonna continue to be a problem. This is a screen. We're all over it. Bossed. Wrap up. Good tackle. Dexter Lawrence back in the game there as well. Read that fairly well. Second and 13. Now we can come out in something like dime and take advantage of our DBs. The first round pick, Victor Farr, is on the field, but this still could be a run, and it's gonna be. We fill the lane well, and that's a tackle from Victor Farr, the first round pick, wrapping up Zeke one on one. Let's go. He looks like, he looks pretty big. See him at 31 there, standing on the 40. You know, that is not your run-of-the-mill 5'11 corner as C.D. Lamb is pushed out of bounds by Darnay Holmes. Maybe did it himself there. And looks like they're going to try a field goal on 4th and 8. This is from fairly deep. And here is the kick. It is short. No good. And our offense will come back out on the field. I don't know why this happens, but when I record... Like Giants franchise and even lately my most recent mock draft. I, my nose gets so itchy. And I just keep itching it. And then it gets redder and redder and redder. And then I get called Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer after Christmas. It, it, it's it's ridiculous. And it's, it's only when I'm recording. I, I don't know why. It doesn't seem to make any sense to me. We're going to step up. Bailey, good speed. Vanilla Vic takes a hit. Survives the contact, no fumble, 15-yard rush from Cody Bailey. 
as I mentioned, Vanilla Vic. Merch link in the description for the first time in this 2025 season. We got to get Nick Duvall involved. We're going to go to the other tight end, though, Jaden Rhodes. It's a good result. A lot of pressure. I think we dealt with it fairly well. Second and four. Get Nick Duvall the football. Kind of doubling him. Leaving that wide open. That's not perfect accuracy. That's behind. Take a good completion there. Anyway, Nick Duvall, touchdown. Maybe Odell. Maybe a check down. There's Barkley. Break a tackle. And we got maybe one extra. All right, they're going to give us forward progress at the nine. Second down and six. Running behind our new signing, James Daniels at right guard. Good combo block. Barkley fumbles the football. It's recovered by Odigazua. Oh, my God. Another turnover inside the 10. What are we doing? Saquon just coughed it up. I mean, we were going to be knocking on the door, but he just got stood up and, and let go of the ball. Dallas gets the football on the one, but that is another killer. I mean, the turnovers in this game have been crazy so far. I think we have to expect the run, but it doesn't have to be a run here. And it's not. Good thing we didn't run commit. Throw back shoulder on the slant. Backside on the slant, not back shoulder. CD Lamb first down. And just like that, they're off the one. The hardest defense to play in this game, if you just call coach suggestions, is defense on the one. It's whatever they call, it's going to be a huge game. It's very frustrating. Third one, they go hurry up on this. They're trying to quick snap us. Lobbed up! I'm holding Y. How are we out of reach? Glenn Gore standing right on the football. Thankfully, the pass is broken up by another giant DB. And Dallas will punt. Should be a turnover, man. Greg Sheldon, give us a good return, though. Just don't have the change of direction. Okay, offense and Saquon looking to bounce back post-fumble. They're not going to. Tony drops the football. This is going to be one of those games, guys. Clearly, it's going to be one of those games. Second and ten, we might be able to get away with a draw here. Saquon's still a beast. We got to trust him. I can't get around the block. I can't get around it. I'm holding straight. He refuses to go. Third and 13. Yeah, I knew it was going to be a fake blitz there. We fit that into Odell. Yeah, I just could not secure the catch. The punt. Let's blitz Darnay Holmes. I'd love to get him closer to the line. But down he goes anyway. It's John Bost. Dak Prescott. Overwhelmed by the big blue wrecking crew. A nice play. Brings up second and 16. We are going to pass commit. They can run if they want to. But this is not a good time for it. 40 seconds left to go. They're going to run a screen. Dexter Lawrence all over it. We're going to call a timeout. And we're going to run commit. We're all over it. Zeke. Oh, almost had the outside there. Glenn Gore, what a tackle. We'll call our second to last timeout. Also happens to be our second timeout. And we'll see if we can do something. With Wyatt Anthony, we can drill from anywhere. We know that. So, just get him close enough. We could probably hit from right here. He wants to make a play. Get that to Odell. Oh, he breaks a tackle. Let's go, Odell. We're going to call a timeout. 15 seconds is a weird amount of time. We could just take our field goal here. Certainly an option. I think we're going to try and take maybe a shot to the end zone. Or get out of bounds. One of those two. Maybe Larry Smith on a drag. Tony on a deep cross. And then Duvall and Beckham going deep. Maybe even move Duvall to the other side. See what the safety does. And see, we'll see if we can just sprint to the end zone. But we have one-on-one. -on -one. I know we had an open man. Got to take a shot to the end zone in that spot. And we're probably going to do it again. You know Duvall's our guy. Lobbing it up. Down the field. Duvall catches it. And he's down in the one. We threw it too early. Oh, don't celebrate. We're going to the locker room. Three points off the board. I think we got to take that chance. I just threw it a fraction of a second too early. And we're down at the one instead of into the end zone. What a first half. What a first half. And the sponsor of today's video is Underdog Fantasy. This is what I'm rocking on Underdog for this week's games. Uh, very interesting. I don't know. I'm rocking with my Giants. 
They crushed the Vikings offensively last time. They didn't win, of course, but these guys all perform really well, and Brock Purdy's been unbelievable so far with the Niners. I expect them to do pretty well in this first round of the playoffs. So this is what I'm rocking with. Use code BANGLE. You'll get a deposit match up to $100, and let's get to the third quarter. We'll get the football to start 6-3 to three here at MetLife Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. How about a Greg Sheldon spark plug return? Not getting them. Tony comes in motion, little fake to him. We're going to throw it to him anyway. Tony, turn up field. Would have loved the block there from Evan Neal. But Tony just didn't have the speed to even make that anything. Second down and eight. Backside of that play. There's Tony again. It's a good result. Work off play action. Keeping Nick Duvall in the block. Not great. We got Odell, though. That's a nice catch on the sideline. Good ball from Bailey. That's what we need to do. Running. It's been whatever so far for us, but throwing the football, we've been successful. We've moved the ball. We've taken shots downfield successfully. Just got to continue to do that. And that'll be the motivation here. We just need time to let something get open. We're going to throw down the field. Duvall can't haul it in. We were under some pretty serious pressure with the contain, and somebody's in the zone. Anthony Barr. We're going to run right at him. Second and 10, whatever. Barkley, big hole, big gain. That's a first down for Saquon. Tony comes in motion. We showed them this earlier. This time it's a run. Barkley changed the direction. Pretty slow. And there's our starting left guard. Chris Lindstrom's injured. Okay, we'll pass the ball as a result. Quick hitter, Nick Duvall, first down. Yep, he got about eight, maybe nine. Anthony Barr is nine yards away from getting out of the zone. Who's he covering? We're going to take a shot here. Larry Smith worked back to the football. Uh, we were under a bit of pressure there, and the football becomes underthrown despite giving us perfect accuracy, supposedly. But it ended up being perfect because it was right where we needed it to be. Larry Smith works back to the football, and we're first and goal from the three. Lindstrom's going to be out for this drive. Joshua Izudu steps in at left guard. We're going to work a pass in here to start. Quick throw, and we can't get the football away. Micah Parsons sacks us. Come on, man. I like Barkley here, maybe, on a quick throw. They took it away. Step up with Bailey. He's wrapped up, but gets a few. And now, all of a sudden, it's third and goal. Did we get too cute with play action? We were supposed to throw the football immediately, but we couldn't even throw it that quickly. And it's third and, and somewhat deep here. We're going to step up again. Bailey, show us what you got. Oh, down to the one. Man. We are left with a decision. CPU wants us to go for it. I like it. Fourth and goal from the one to deep one. Keep in mind, we have Saquon. We're going to trust it. Up the gut. Untouched. Touchdown. Saquon Barkley, first of the year. And finally, we find the end zone. Took us long enough. Nick Duvall in the zone, by the way. Is that a new development? I didn't notice that. That's that's unfortunate. That's just a great throw from Dak. Glenn Gore pushes Collins out of bounds. It's a good route. I mean, it's a wheel. What are you going to do? It's, we're just not in position. Can't make the play. Don't have the athletes. It is what it is. First down for Dallas. It's play action. It is. Back up. Dak rolling out. Finding Kayvon Thibodeau. Second sack of the game. For number five, love to see it. The former fifth overall pick making his presence known. Hasn't really dominated today, but Dax run into him twice. They all count the same. Second and 17. We pass commit. Did we get it off in time? Far. I mean, it's a great tackle. Not far at all from Dalton Schultz. First round pick. Here's our draft class. Only four picks. We traded around a lot, but we've got a good team. We can afford to do that. Looking like the Rams. Thibodeau's in the zone. Watch out. We're going to pass him on third and 16. I mean, if they run, whatever. I, I don't know why they're coming out in jumbo. They don't know the situation. Check down. Incomplete. Stupid. Thank you, Dallas. We'll take the ball back. Here, let's go, Saquon. Show us what you got. Is the juke button broken? Just like that, it being second and 11 is so frustrating. This is surely a fake blitz. You got to be hesitant here. Get it to Duval. There we go. That'll work. 
Nick Duval probably closing in on, you know, 60 or 70 yards receiving. There's 70 on the nose. But this drive's gonna be a lot of first down runs. Trying to take some time off the clock. Looking for space, just looking for Saquon to eat into that clock and give us this win. Third and one, we're lining up to pass. But I think I'd probably prefer to go inside zone here. Just lower the shoulder and see if we can push through. We're not gonna get the snap off, we gotta call a timeout. I just hate that it's RPO zone peak for my run play. It took us too long to uh, audible there with two clock on. And then it took too long for the receivers to get open, obviously, or over to the other side. Third and one. That's the result we wanted. Timeout. Worth it. We're up 13-3. It's a close game. But that first down was crucial to go to the fourth quarter up by 10. It hasn't been the most exciting game in terms of, you know, a ton of offensive scoring. But there have been some big plays on both sides. I think you'll agree. It's a lot of offensive mistakes, maybe more than anything. This is a peculiar coverage from Dallas. We're going to run all over this. <laughs> what are they doing? Just welcoming us down the field? I appreciate that. I really do. I don't know if Nick Duvall's doubled here. He's got double me. I think they're going to be in trouble here. Nick Duvall's open. Oh, he's, he's open. Nick Duvall, easy. Touchdown, 88. Duvall, touchdown. Wow. He just ran right by J. Ron Curse. It wasn't even close. I thought we'd have some type of jump ball. No. Beautiful throw from Bailey. Duvall tracks it over the shoulder, makes the grab, touchdown. That is an explosive play. Should have had one to end the first half. Dak cannot believe it. And it's going to be 20 to 3. That is a huge play. That is a potential dagger here in the fourth quarter. We gotta get out there. Uh, yeah, that's a mistake. We're just out of position. Cowboys continue to move the football down the field here. We got a lead though. So it's not the worst thing if they score a touchdown here. Touchdown would still put us ahead by 10. Time is not on their side at the moment. So they can just keep checking down if they want to. All right. Quick throw, find the football. It's good coverage from Darnay Holmes who should, for the first time in this series, be our primary slot corner, which is what we've wanted the entire time. Taking us long enough. And uh, we'll just continue to try and grind away. How is Zeke still up? Bring him down. Third and inches, is this a run? It is, change of direction is great there from Zeke, but that's okay. You can get two or three yards, pick up the first down. Don't really care. Time continues to tick off the clock. Just gotta get outside here. It's good defense. Avery McKinney wraps up. Miles. Elijah Miles, I believe. Second and ten. Five and a half to play. Man coverage against Jake Ferguson. I wish he would try it. Run a route. Also, Dallas playing with no sense of urgency, by the way. Jake Ferguson gets a couple. Whatever. They are seemingly in no hurry to snap the ball. Ever. Third and five. Dak throwing to the flat. Far is there. Wraps up Zeke. It's going to be fourth and two. I think he got out of bounds, though. So that clock will stop momentarily until the snap. And uh, we'll see what they do here on fourth and two. Got to have it. They run the football. Zeke gets it. That's a touchdown, Dallas. They're not out of it yet. But obviously, a fourth down stop there would have been huge to our success. Ten-point game. Just under five to play. They have three timeouts, so it's not yet onside kick territory. But we're not far. Let's work off play action. It should be it should be so obvious that we're uh, we're running that we pass out of bounds and Jesus. Well, the, everything there was not good. Just so we're on the same page, I'm aware. I know this should have been a drive where we started out running the ball. There's still time left, and they have timeout, so it's not just like total chew clock, obviously. But it would be nice to take some time off the clock for sure. Moving the chains is a good way to do it. Let's go, Saquon. We got space. We got the sideline. We don't want to get out of bounds, though, but we got close. Good first down. First down, you know, is not going to end the game here. But a touchdown is certainly the dagger. So we're just going to keep trying to pick up as many yards as possible rather than, like, 
Playing it safe. This should take us to the two-minute warning. And there it is. Dallas is going to start to worry about timeouts here. Uh, we could run the ball. We don't necessarily have to. I mean, if we see single coverage, I'm trying to end the game actively. Single coverage on Duval. Down the field. Go up and get it. It's going to be intercepted. How is that an interception, man? I throw a jump ball to my receiver in single coverage with the double me uh, ability. And it's a second interception for J. Ron Curse. I, I would call that a joke, but I'm not laughing. I Okay, I just I just laughed a little bit. Um, it's, I think it's stupid. Good defense. Oh, Glenn Gore's a beast. He just tipped it to himself. The self-alley-oop. Glenn Gore, game over. Thanks for playing. It's not quite game over, but that's certainly a really good play. All right, Dallas calling timeouts now. Here we go, Saquon. That's going to be really close to a first. First down ends it. You know we got to run the ball here. They know we have to run the ball. Although it doesn't look like they know. We have Nick Duvall off the line. We move him close. What does that do? Nothing, really. How do you shoot the gap there? <laughs> what was that? He just was unblocked. He just ran right past him. I mean, this is a this is a 90 overall left guard doesn't even make contact. What was the confusion here? This game is so terrible. There was no odd blocking scheme, by the way. There it was just go up and block ahead. It's a dive. There was no pull. We'll kick a field goal. Wide Anthony, of course, is good. Gonna be 23 to 10. Two possession game either way. We could have went for the uh, jugular there and went, you know, tried to get the first down, just end it. But, you know, they've got a tough a tough road ahead. So, I'm comfortable just taking the points and um, see where that puts us. A minute and 20 to go. Dak check down. Farley and not wrap up. Gore. Having a good game, man. Two turnovers forced is a phenomenal performance by a safety. I mean, it goes without saying. And he's tackled well the entire game. Not something we saw a ton of in uh, in season one. Zach Martin faking an injury so that they can get a stoppage is ridiculous. That, that should be a, a 10 second runoff at least. <laughs> Darnay Holmes! A oh, huge hit! They, they called that a cut stick. Darnay Holmes just blew him up. Oh my goodness. Dak lobbing end zone. Farley! Good pass breakup. All right, let's get let's get out of uh, out of man and then out of cover two. We're gonna cover three. We're gonna play this deep, and we'll see what Dak tries to do here. Lobbing should be intercepted. My two top corners can't catch the freaking ball. Incomplete. Would have been game. All right, man coverage across the board. Who wants to make a play? Fourth and four. Game on the line. Who wants to be the hero? Make a play. Playing over the top. Check down. It's intercepted by Farley, the newest giant. Nothing but green grass and daylight ahead of him. It is all over. Caleb Farley takes it all the way back to the three. That receiver came out of nowhere. I recognize it should have been a pick six. I said green grass instead of grass. It threw off everything. I tried to run out the clock. Should have just taken the pick six. Poor Caleb Farley. Tried to run out the clock. That's a shame. <laughs> That's a shame. All right, final play of the game here. 23 to 10 victory. Unless Saquon Barkley does anything, he doesn't. Okay. That's the game. 23-10. Uh, betters, furious. Furious that that's not 30 to 10 as your final. What are you going to do? Cody Bailey throws for two interceptions. Touchdown on 297 yards. Passing. Kind of a tough one. Barkley, 3.9 yards per carry. Had the touchdown. Had a fumble. Only broke a tackle. 
I'm conflicted on his performance. Overall, I would say he played fine. Receiving. Very, very interesting. Nick Duvall, 6 for 117 at a touchdown. Uh, nobody really doing anything too crazy. I mean, my three wideouts with 50 yards. It's kind of what they do. I think we distribute the ball pretty well. And then defensively, Glenn Gore led the team in tackles. None for loss, but had an interception, had a forced fumble. Lawrence had two for loss. Thibodeau, of course, with the two sacks. Two for loss on Bost. Got a sack as well, played well. A pick for Gore and Farley. Should have been a pick six. Uh, I regret not going into the end zone. Farley forced a fumble as well. No, Glenn Gore forced that fumble. They're not giving that to Glenn Gore? Oh, that's devastating. Now I don't feel bad for Caleb Farley. He got a forced fumble he didn't deserve. Oh, that's crazy. Let's take another look at it. Maybe I remembered it wrong, but I think Gore obliterated Dak Prescott. You cannot give that to Caleb Farley. The ball is out. Is Farley's face mask cut touching his shoulder? No. That is a Glenn Gore forced fumble. That is insane that Caleb Farley would, would get credit for that as he struggles to even recover the ball. Nontro Cobb showing off some freak athleticism diving back. Uh, surely an ACL tear type dive. That's crazy. Well, we won 23-10. Very interesting game. We turned over the football a little bit too much. And Saquon's like, hey, we didn't execute our game plan. Remember, I fumbled on the one. But we did win, though. All right. Well, you're, you're right. A win is a win. Not everyone's going to be pretty, but any week that we're able to come out on top has to be considered a success. Overall, yes. I like how every helmet up there is Nick Duvall's, by the way, the 88. Entire team gets 1,000 XP as well. Can't complain about that. And we'll advance to week two. We'll finish out the episode with upgrades before we take on the Buccaneers in the next episode. Uh, thank you for coming back to Giants franchise. Darnay Holmes, I think we just got to do, I mean, I think we got to do man coverage, get him up to an 85 overall, and unlock a new ability slot and more abilities. Seems like kind of a no-brainer. Press goes up. It was already really low, though. And his next ability will be, I don't know. Short route knockout, I think makes sense when he's in the slot. I think that makes perfect sense. For Greg Sheldon, he's so one-dimensional. We just upgrade what he's good at. Now we're going to go playmaker. He's a return man. We didn't give him superstar dev to give him the return man ability. But that's okay. And then the CPU can upgrade his Udo and Flat. But that's going to do it for the episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.